Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today on this brief video, we're going to talk about heat capacity. And specifically, we're going to compare heat capacity under two different situations. When your system's at constant volume and when your system's at constant pressure. More on those in a second. If you're not familiar with heat capacity, go ahead and check out my other videos on heat capacity, which I'll link to below, and then come back here. Briefly, heat capacity is just a measure of how much heat you have to transfer to a system to raise its temperature. So for example, say you apply the same amount of heat to water and to metal. You may know that the metal gets hotter. So for example, you're trying to boil water, right? And you got water in a pot and you got that metal pot sitting there. Which one's going to get hotter faster? Well, we know the metal gets hotter and then the water. And at least part of the reason why is that metal has a pretty low heat capacity. That is, its temperature rises more quickly per a given amount of heat added. And so in that way, it's like this narrow bucket here. So this is like metal. Let me get a color you can see. So this is like metal, and this is like water. Water is like a wide bucket. It takes lots of heat to raise its temperature. Metal is like a narrow bucket. It takes just a little heat to raise its temperature. And so heat capacity will tell us about how much a system's temperature will change by under a given amount of heat transfer. Now we can do this under a couple different conditions, and constant volume and constant pressure are the two we're going to talk about uh, in this video. So first, let's look at constant volume and then constant pressure, and then we'll make some final uh, comparisons to help you think about this system more clearly. Now, when we heat a system at constant volume, what we mean by that is that it's in a container that can't expand. Its volume is fixed. And so in this way, it's like you take a thermos and you close it, and you apply heat to it. Uh, you take a pressure cooker, right? It's closed and you're heating it. And that's constant volume conditions. And so if your container's sealed and its volume can't change, every single little bit of energy you had, add, say with this flame down here, right, is all going to be transferred to there. And remember that when we think about a system's internal energy, remember that it's delta U, that's our internal energy, is equal to Q plus W. In this case, all of the energy gained by the system is in terms of Q. So W is equal to zero. But Q is greater than zero in this example. We're adding heat to our system and it's warming up. All the energy we're adding is going to heat. And that means that constant volume heat capacity will maximize how much the temperature of your system rises by. How does that differ from constant pressure heat capacity? Well, constant pressure is when you either have an open container. The reason that's constant pressure is because it's open to the atmosphere and the atmosphere is always at about one ATM of pressure. Another condition that's constant pressure is if we have a piston on top of our uh, container and the piston can move up and down. Both of those are going to keep the pressure the same throughout our experiment and that changes a little bit about how this heat is transferred and what happens to it. So let's take a look at our example down below. We're applying heat with this flame and when that happens, not only does our system gain heat, it also actually gets higher, our piston moves up, and that means there's a delta V. So our volume's changing. And remember that work is equal to negative P delta V. So our system is actually doing work because its volume is increasing and it's doing work on the surroundings. And that means if we think about our equation delta U equals Q plus W, some of our energy is going to go to Q and some of our energy is going to go to W. So the energy in this case is split between heat and work. Notice this is the conditions we normally measure heat capacity at, right? A closed container, basically the only time you do that is something like bomb calorimetry. But most of the time in the lab, when you're running an experiment, you're going to be at constant pressure anytime you have an open container. And that means whenever we heat something, that heat is split between doing work, that is expanding the gases, uh, and increasing the temperature of our system. So two different conditions under which we can apply heat, constant pressure and constant volume. So let's summarize what we've talked about. The very first thing to point out is that the heat capacity of the system at constant pressure is greater than the heat capacity at constant volume. That means it takes more heat to heat something up at constant pressure than constant volume. And why is that? Because at constant pressure, we're splitting our energy between heat and work. So it's going to take more energy that you add to that system to increase its temperature. Notice that this is really only for gases because the type of work being done here is PV work. That's an expansion of the volume. If we think about solids or liquids, when we heat those, it doesn't change the volume much. So even though at constant pressure the volume may change a little bit, 
It's actually the case that your heat capacity at constant pressure and constant volume is basically the same for solids and liquids. It's only gases where PV work, that is an expansion, uh, is significant. So PV work equals zero for solids and liquids, and that means that our heat capacity at constant pressure and constant volume is pretty much the same for solids and liquids. It's only for gases that we get this appreciable difference. The last important point to note is there's a relationship between heat capacity at constant pressure and heat capacity at constant volume for ideal gases. And this will come up in problems over and over again. So the heat capacity of constant pressure is equal to the heat capacity at constant volume plus R, which is the gas constant. So if you're given CV for an ideal gas, you have CP. If you're given CP for an ideal gas, you have CV. All you have to do is add R, the gas constant. So in this video, what we've done is we've summarized the relationship between heat capacity at constant volume and constant pressure. Remember, for gases, these are different, and heat capacity at constant pressure is larger. It can store more energy per temperature degree. Now, CP and CV are the same for solids and liquids, and finally, you can add R to CV to get CP. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions on heat capacity, constant volume, or constant pressure, ask them below. You can also subscribe to receive updates about future videos, uh, or visit my channel to see a bunch of other chemistry videos. Thanks for watching.